Welcome to my presentation, Effectively Using GR. My name is Joseph Heinen. Together with my colleagues at Forschungszentrum Jüdisch, a large research institution in Germany, we are working on the further development of our plotting software, GR Framework. Many of you will have used the library as a back-end of the widely used plot as package before, but GR can do much more. Today, I would like to give you an overview of improvements, news, as well as the current and future developments of the GR framework. So let me start with the improvements. The build environment has been extended with more hardware platforms, like Arc Linux on the one hand and ARM Hard Float on the other hand. So now Raspbian on Raspberry Pi is an officially supported platform. We also added CMake files to build GR with CMake, which is much faster than using the GNU Make system. Also, the output drivers have changed. The primary output devices like GKS Term under macOS and GKS Qt Term under Linux Windows now allow multiple client connections. Both drivers now support high DPI. In addition, the PGF TIC-C driver has been heavily revised. Both MPEG-4 and WebM are now available for video output. A software renderer was implemented for the display of three-dimensional grids. This allows GR to create three-dimensional graphics on headless systems. Furthermore, the compatibility with MATLAB in GR utils was improved. Last but not least, it should be mentioned that the start time for GR could be reduced to less than 0.15 seconds. Let me now turn to the new features. For drawing markers or other shapes, attributes like border color and border thickness have been added. Furthermore, there are now output functions for drawing paths. The latter consists of arbitrary lines or Bézier curves with or without borders and can be filled as desired. This new functionality is used in conjunction with free type fonts to display text in publishable quality. A special highlight is the newly integrated LaTeX renderer, which can render specific formulas in LaTeX format in highest resolution. A local latex installation is no longer necessary. In addition, the entire GR library has been transpiled to JavaScript with a tool called mscript, another efficient and interactive output medium for browser environments. The integration into JupyterLab, Interact, Atom and Binder is now much better and more performant. To simplify future developments, a meta layer called GRM was developed, which allows a better integration into browser environments and graphical user interface toolkits like Qt5. Regarding installation, we have created the first version of build scripts for the binary builder. More platforms will follow as soon as full support, especially for Qt5, is available. We have also provided a sample workload script for the package compiler to improve performance for pure GR and the plot as environments. With a package compiled version, you can run the GR example, for example, in less than one second. Borders are now real borders and are no longer simulated by multiple drawing of shapes. They can be used not only for marker symbols, but also for shapes such as squares, rectangles, circles and ellipses. In the output drivers, these are implemented as efficiently as possible using native device-specific drawing functions. On this slide you can see examples of different shapes and how these in turn can be used to create complex representations. The popular PostScript sample document, the Tiger, can be drawn as a sequence of path NGR in less than 5 milliseconds. There are also, of course, also useful applications. For example, the Yulia logo in the GR example directory, 
consisting of paths and circles. Now what I would like to come to the things I believe many have been waiting for a long time. With the shown extensions, the font support could be improved considerably. Text can now be displayed in any resolution with vector fonts, so the plots really look the same on all output devices. This is also used by the new built-in latex renderer for mathematical formulas. The advantages are obvious. The drawing speed is many times better. The quality depends essentially only on the resolution of the output medium. The text boxes required for positionings are exact. Rotating text is possible without quality loss. Two such fonts currently provided are Deja Vu Sans, the new default font, and Computer Modern. The latter is specially adapted a specially adapted free type font that, it used, that is used in the latex renderer. In the future, user defined fonts will also be possible. Here you can see the new stuff in action. The famous LIGO example was transferred to Julia and started in a Jupyter notebook with a GR meta layer. As a back end, we use JavaScript in this case. By long pressing the mouse button, a region of interest can be selected. If you move over the data points, tooltips are displayed. These can also be customized, customized via callbacks. You can adjust the viewing area of the plot by zooming and panning. Special attention is paid to the HTML export. The notebook, including the JavaScript environment, can be exported to its HTML file. The interactive lab Elements are still available in this exported document. Let me at this point briefly describe what is going on here. The sequence of plot command is not necessarily directly processed in the convenience layer of GR, but serialized and sent to the new GR meta layer, GRM. This is done via a TCP IP socket. Right now, GRM can be used with two different backends, a Qt terminal, Qt term, or a JavaScript environment, JS term. In this example, we use the JS part. The calling Julia environment and the display part are loosely coupled to avoid trouble with graphical user interface event loops. No tricks are necessary here. The actual drawing work is done by a second GR instance. instance. In the future, we would like to implement a QML web integration. The work on this has already started. Now, how can you use the GR meta layer? In scripts that have used the GR convenience layer exclusively, a single line is sufficient. The meta layer is used if an environment variable called GR display is set accordingly. A single line before importing the GR module is sufficient. The rest of the code does not need to be modified. A script that was actually designed for unidirectional output in a terminal browser can be provided with interactive elements in this way. In the HTML link given here, you can convince yourself of the new functionality without having to build your own Jupyter or Julia instance. Of course, all this does not only work with Jupyter in the browser. Other environments or interactive development environments also benefit from the new features. For example, Interact, UpitolaB, Atom, Binder, to name but a few. Also, in the three-dimension part of GR, a lot, of, a lot is happening right now. In one of the next versions, we will offer mouse interactions for three-dimensional plots and other transformations, for example, a perspective transformation. In this example shown here, you can already get an impression of how the plot will look like. The technical requirements for the shown example here are already met in the current GR version, but not implemented as a default behavior. What will happen next? One of your questions might be, how can I use this in plot S? The answer is unfortunately not very pleasant. Actually, the GR backend for plot S should be completely written 
our corresponding modern alternatives should be offered. In the current version of the backend, only low-level functions are used. Some functionality that is now available in GR had been emulated in PlotS. Nevertheless, a rewrite would make sense. Each new functionality would only have to be implemented once, and that for different environments. Therefore, we would like to include as much functionality as possible in the meta layer. This would also simplify future use in Qt's QML web engine. We also have thought about a separate layout engine and a recipe system. In order to meet the time to first plot criterion, I think there is no way around it. Such a recipe system should be language independent, maybe purely declarative, and based on a simple markup language. So, thank you for your attention. A big thank you to all my colleagues. Without their valuable contributions, the development of the GR library would not be possible.